Okay, and we know you'll be looking at that all morning long. You better believe Thank it. Thank you so much, Lynn. This morning, Congress is going to hear from the executives of two companies at the center of this summer's nationwide egg recall. Right, and Hillendale Farms of Iowa voluntarily recalled more than a half billion eggs last month after more than 1,500 people got sick, including people right here in Colorado. The owner of one of those farms plans to tell lawmakers he was horrified to learn about people getting sick. Colorado Congresswoman Diana DeGette is the vice chair of the House Energy and Commerce subpanel that will be questioning the executive today. And she joins us now on the phone. Good morning. Good morning. Good to hear from you. Now, one of the major issues in this is the filthy conditions found at these two farms, including bugs and overflowing trash. What are some of the questions you have for these execs today? Well, I, I, I heard the, you say that the executive was horrified to learn that people got sick. But when they're raising chickens in those kinds of environments, I can't understand why they wouldn't think that there would be foodborne illnesses. One of the things I plan to talk about today is to urge the Senate to pass the food safety legislation that the House passed last year. You know, it took these egg companies three months to recall these eggs, and um, our food safety legislation in the House includes uh, mandatory recall authority for the authority so they can get contaminated foods off the shelves much quick, more quickly. So so I, I, I find it a little disingenuous that these executives are now saying, oh, we don't know why people got sick when they were obviously raising these chickens in such sub subpar conditions. Congresswoman, there are only a couple of uh, really big suppliers of eggs, and they, you know, they send out eggs all over the country, including here in Colorado, as you know. I guess the question I'm wondering about here is, are these companies getting too big? And, and by them getting so big, then when you have an outbreak, you have an outbreak that is this large. And if they're too big, what would you do about it? Well, uh, uh, our food distribution system in this country has changed dramatically, even since I was a little girl. And so, but our regulatory schemes have not changed. So whether or not the companies are large or small, they still need to comply with a certain set of standards. Most of those are state standards, by the way. But then we have the technology right now, if we find contaminated food, to quickly remove it from the shelves so that consumers don't get sick. And that's what I've really been focusing from my perch in Washington is how can we make our food safety standards uh, tough enough so that when these large companies do have trouble, the, the um, FDA or the U.S. Department of Agriculture can swoop in and actually get the food off? And we have the ability to do that. We just need to update our laws. And to touch on that, what about those people who say the government has too much power when it comes to regulating food? You know, we've heard it would hurt smaller businesses, and they say that it would just cost too much. How would you respond? Well, actually, it would be in the financial best interest of businesses. For example, one of the provisions that I've worked on for years is the idea of traceability. So we could identify where food came from, from field to fork. At first, the food industry opposed that. They said it would be too costly and over, overly burdensome. But what they realized as time went on, number one, we have the technology to do it, and it's really not that expensive. And number two, it's a lot more expensive when a whole industry like the egg industry or the tomato industry a couple of years ago loses its whole market because we don't remove contaminated food. So actually most industry sources now support this legislation. All right, we'll see what happens today. And incidentally, uh, if you didn't see it, we did a good question not long ago about how salmonella gets into eggs because that's changed over the years and that's available on our website, left side. Go down to the good question part and you can find the story there. Thanks.